Hare Krishna, this is just a um, quick update on the software. I, it was my fourth time to do it, believe it or not, in the middle of doing it. The last time, my IP got blocked, so I couldn't log on to do anything. So it's, uh, I, I'm getting very sort of uh, worn out with doing the whole thing and then closing it down. So hopefully this one, it'll work. Uh, I just got an email from Govinda Prabhu, who is working on the top banner. And he asked me the questions, the right questions, which I think if I answer them for everybody, it's going to help everybody with what they're doing. So I'm doing a little screencast to show uh, how we answer his question. Uh, the first thing was, he asks here, so I should use JavaScript to fade the two divs. He's doing the header, and there's two different divs uh, in the um, HTML. And we're using, uh, we use Java, uh, JavaScript, and jQuery to fade uh, from one to the other. The bottom one stays all the time. The top one fades in. Then we change the picture in the bottom one. The top one fades out. We pay the, change the picture in the top one. The top one fades in like that. That's how we do it. I believe it's been done for the Prabhupada slideshow. If you click on Prabhupada TV. And the, the code for Prabhupada TV, it's, it's in there. You, if you... Uh, He's also, it's been singled out here. It's how we do the slideshow and, and change our top pick and bottom picture for that. So that's, uh, yeah, that's how we do it. And I want to take you a tour of the JavaScript, and, uh, which includes the jQuery, and the HTML, so we get an idea how it all works together. The second question is one I really want to deal with. He says, where do I get event information from to fill into the div? There's, here's the div that you'll find, we'll look at that in our, in our HTML file. And it's running, well, how do I get the information to put in there? Where's the source to get the events information from? Is there a global variable which I use in the div? In the wiki, he doesn't find the implementation. So what you have to do is you have to look in the code to find it. So everybody has got their web space. And I've set, you've all got your login details. So here is... Um, here is Govinda V's. Mm, nope. And I think I went, uh, if I do a new one, you'll all see how it works. Host name is M A Y A P U R dot T V. And uh, hold on. You need sort of the same details. You've all got your own username, it's Govinda's. And I type in his password. And that should take us to his personal web space, which it does. Now here you've got, um, this doesn't have to be that big, uh, here's his web space. Now here's the, here's the index file that he's, he's referenced here. He sort of says this is the div there in the, in the, in the HTML file. So the nice thing about, I, I use WinSCP. It's a nice uh, client here, so you can use it yourself. If you, if you want to edit something, you can just double click on it. And uh, let me just sort of make it so it's visible. So we can see it here. And we'll find the bit that he's talking about. For instance, if you wanted to work with the banner, the banner panel is all here. That's the banner. And you can see it's, uh, it's got a div. It's got places to put in. Uh, the different the different pictures, um, a place for the donations, a place for the tabs. Uh, where it says here, uh, it says ban banner here. That will be the picture. So the uh, picture gets loaded. You already see when you click on it, the picture gets loaded. Anything to do with the interface, you will find in the JavaScript that is visible to you. There's a lot of JavaScript and PHP that's not visible to you, which is to do with getting stuff from the server. You, so it it just clutter everything up, so it's been kept out of sight. All the stuff that you can see in your JavaScript area is stuff that you can use to make your to make design your own um, web pages. And so here's where the banner will go, and the headlines. This is where the headlines will go. Uh, you can see it's filled in already, Elephant DT Procession. You can see that on the, on the website now. It's just a fixed one. But actually, you should have two different, Im two different uh, divs, and you change the text in one, you fade that div out. You change the text in the other, and you fade the other div in. Like that, you sort of work. 
So those are the headlines. So that is the exciting HTML page. So now let's look at the exciting. We don't need to look at the CSS at the moment, actually. Let's look at the exciting JavaScript one. Is it going to open for us? Yes. This is your JavaScript page, and everything is here. OK, so we're just going to have a look through this. And uh, we'll go straight to his uh, Govinda Prabhu's question. He says, where do I get the information to fill on the div? What's the source to get the information from? Is there any global variable which I use in the div? All these questions are answered here. Um, this is going through here. This is the Javas. This is the JavaScript that runs at the start. You can read through the different stuff here. Uh, that stuff that has to run at the start. The main one that runs at the start is out of sight because it runs a whole lot of stuff to load up all the information from the server, like the events, like the slide-ins, like the tickers. And uh, at the end of that, it sends you here. So stuff you want to run at the start, when your page loads, you can put in there. Okay, now here we go down. Here is the information for all the channels. This is where the, where the URL for the banner picture goes, the one at the very top. So this is where all the information is, and these are all global variables. Hold on. No. <laughs> oh dear, there's somebody at the door. Hold on. Okay. Yes, there are global variables, and the global variables are uh, the global variables are uh, listed here. As you say, you've got the, the, the this is where they're all kept. So this is put anything you want done after all the variables are loaded in here. So every time you change the page, say for instance you want to update the newsletter URL somewhere, you put the code in here. We've already got some stuff here. For instance. See, we got banner pit URL. As soon as the page is loaded, all of these get refreshed. And you can see here how we put the picture in the banner. Just one line of code. It's jQuery. It's beautiful. It, so this, this line, the first bit, the dollar means I'm using jQuery. Hash banner actually means, I'll show you where hash banner is. Hash banner means go to the tag with the ID of banner. Let's go here. Here's the tag with the ID of banner. So that's what that means. So it says, go get the tag with the ID of banner and change its HTML. And, it, and, and uh, ma no, make its HTML equal to this. So this very nice little bit of jQuery puts image SRC with channel info dot banner pick URL, which is the new top picture for whatever channel you're using. So every time you change a channel, this gets called, and you refill all the different fields by using jQuery or uh, some JavaScript as well with all the new information. So it will rewrite the HTML here that we've got in the index. It'll actually replace everything in here with the source code SRC uh, banner pick URL and that's so jQuery is uh, and j rewrites the actual HTML and then the new picture appears these pictures aren't so at the moment it will put the picture in you notice that the top does change but what Govinda V is going to do is going to have to write two different um, you, will, you will be putting two different placeholders in there for the pictures and fading one in and fading one out. So he'll be doing a different. And these, these are other things. So that's where he gets his, that's where the banner picture comes from. Now we're wondering about the events. So here's another function, general info. This is more information from the, from the server. The only thing you need to work with is donation meter received, which I don't think we're even going to use in the future. And here's one which gives you all the events information, which uh, Govindapur was asking about. Down here, we've got the recordings list, which goes on the right. I'm working on that at the moment. So every time you change a, cam a channel, you get a whole new list of recordings. Now, here's two interesting things. 
you see the some code in there. It says for the global recordings list holds the recordings for the current channel. So if we want to read through everything in that channel, we use this code in JavaScript for R in global recordings list. And then this this accesses our little window where we can type things into. And this means when you type anything new, it doesn't erase what's there before. The plus means add on to the end of the list. Slash n means give me a new line. And this says give me the auth bit of information in the global recording list. And we all know that the global recording list holds all our details. So this cycles through the whole list and puts it in our window. Now let's look at that code in action. If you look for the events as well, you've got, it says document. <coughs> uh, this, this again, this, this document element demo, that's our little viewing window, a new line. So it will put a string in here that looks like that. And then it will give you a title here saying, here are some events. Then it will give you event 1 uh, and event 2 and event 3. You can see this shows you how to get the information out of the events. Event info dot event 1. And this prints it out here, event info dot event 1. It, coupled with the uh, information on track, you're able to use these and see how they work to get the information sorted out. Now, if you want to see this, we can actually go to um, Govinda's web uh, space, look at it on the internet, and see this whole thing working. And uh, you've all got your own one. When, when you were sent your little package, it would have given you your own URL. Govinda Prabhu's is www.mayapur.tv slash a1 slash test Govinda. And uh, here we will see those things in action. Uh, you can drag this and make it bigger. Uh, Hello, spiritual world. Here are some events. Remember those black dots we saw in our JS file? There's the black dots. And this little window is called demo. The white window is called ID. Its ID is called demo. And it's written those dots. Here are some events. And then it gives you event one, event event one, and tells you what the different bits are. And if you go into track, you'll actually be able to understand what these things say, uh, what, what what they're actually recording. And below, remember, said we had all the recordings, and we printed them out, all of them using the information. That's all the recordings that are available. That was when we scroll down to all recordings loaded, and this is our writing it into demo again. It gives our it cycles through the whole recording list and puts the information into the little window with ID demo. And of course, if you want to find demo, you'll find it down here. It's somewhere, because it's overlapping the video panel, it'll be somewhere down here. Slide in, it'll be right on the top. This is it. Text area, ID equals demo. And it gives it a size and you can drag it. And as you can see, when you're looking in here, um, this is this is where it is. It's, it's this is ID equals demo. So you're writing in that. So I think you need to. Everybody needs to be able to dig in here, play around with the information, look in track, and see exactly what it's got. Uh, the best way of learning how to do something is actually fiddling with it. So take a task and take it on. For instance. If you want to put slide-ins, there's no slide-ins, there's no tickers, and no class stuff. So all that information is kept up here. It's all channel info. It's individual channel information because they've all got their own tickers and sliders. So here we have the ticker information will be in that one. The schedule text will be in there. For the schedule, what's the schedule? The class text is in there. And the slider information is in there. And what you'll have to say, that's channel information slider. If you want to see what that looks like, you can turn off. Let's just look at, do a little test now. Let's turn off all the other stuff that we've got here. Uh, we don't want to see all the events. Uh, so what we'll do is I'm going to comment them out so they don't appear. We're commenting all the events out so they don't appear anymore. Uh, I'll put all this back for you in the end, Govinda, don't worry. And I'm going to comment out our document list as well. 
So if I click on here, it gets saved. And now I go back to Chrome. Uh, because if I use the... Uh, I'm using Chrome, but Chrome's going to load all my information from cache. So what I really need to do is, if I do Control shift n it gives me a version of Chrome that's got this sort of spy on it, and I go incognito. So it's not using cache. And if you know how to use Firefox, you're far better off than I am, but I, c I can't work out how to use it. Test go in, but now we're getting it straight from the, uh, without going to cache. And now you can see it's not done the, it's not done the rest of the information. We've successfully stopped the other information coming. Now I'm going to go back here. Uh, let's go and see what's in the slider. So it's very easy. I could, um, let's go and look at the slider at the moment. What does the slider say at the moment? Uh, actually, Okay, let's take a quick look at the slider, the slide in, what's written on it at the moment. Um, look at Govinda's test the, site. Computer supporting and uh, I'm not recording something. Whoops. So we, here we can see the, um, the slide in says restarting to get rid of the flashing back in a few minutes. You can see that just written over there. And if we go to the um, HTML page. We can see slider. Here it says uh, restarting to get rid of the flashing uh, back in a few minutes. These have been given and then there's a whole pile of sensibly chosen divs to slide the thing and slide it out. But they've not been, nothing's been set up in J JavaScript yet. So if we want to uh, change the text of that Restarting to get rid of the flashing, and it's got class main. So let's go back to our jQuery. jQuery is here. And uh, so we need to do one of these. We'll make class main change the HTML in that. Copy, paste. Because the class we put full a stop there. And it was called M A I N. I think it was called main. Let me just check up on that. Index. It was just main. Yeah, we'll just do one of them just for just for an example. Uh, main. HTML. Now it's channel info temple name. When we want to put the slider in. So we'll put channel info slider. C channel info slider. V. I see it's easy. All we do is save that. Now, when we refresh our page, we should change it. Whoops. So uh, the slide in says now. Well, let's see. Now, I, I don't know if you can read it, but it says Iskon Sridam Mayapur, Mongolarti at 4:30. It says Iskon Sridam Mayapur slash Mongolarti at 4:30 a.m. And the lower one says back in a few minutes still. So if we just take a quick look at the at this, so it says restarting to get rid of the flashing is gone, but back in a few minutes is still there. And uh, the top line says this comes through down Mayapur slash Mayapur Mongolarti. So to work out exactly how that works, um, the format of it, there should be two lines there. So let's just go and look in track and see what track has got to say about it. So if I log into track, I'll use my own login. And this gives us a whole pile of more information about what we're doing. I go right down to Mayapur TV HTML5 website development. Now we're using individual channel information. So I click on that. Now we want the slide in tickers. One to four below, they give details on the pictures and their locations. 5 to 7 gives contact information, which goes in the connect side of the thing. 8 to 12 give links. That'll be like donation link, website link, and that. 13, we don't need. 14 gives two lines of up to date information on the live broadcast. On the current site, they slide in from the left over the video. 
those are the ones we're looking at now. It's number 14. So let's go down here for 14. 14, it says global name channel info and channel info slider. Let's just check that's what we have been looking at. Jazz custom. Uh, yeah, it's channel info dot slider. That's the one. That's the one we've been using. Is it channel info dot slider? Oh, I changed the names. I must have got rid of the channel info dot. Ch I think there's two channel infos here by mistake. It's it's an error. All the other ones say just channel info once. Um, and you see the what format it's in. It'll give the upper line. There'll be a slash, then the lower line. So the example says, "Welcome to Kirtan Mail at 2014 slash." Be there, be rounded. So when we're looking at this example here, is considered my push should be in the top line, and the bottom line you should should be Mongol Arti at 4:30 a.m. So when we go to our JavaScript code, what we should really be doing is we should be, we should be finding the slash. Uh, the forward slash in this and putting the stuff before the forward slash in the dot main I, I don't know why it's a class there it probably should be an ID so the bits before the forward slash should go on the top line and the bit after the after the slash should go in the sub the, I don't know if there's a reason why that's class and not a an idea a ID instead of class so that's yeah. So that's how it works. So now we know we can go through all of these different things, banner pick, side pick, watermark, all this stuff. Then we can go and look at them and track. So look at our banner pick here. This is the banner pick URL, channel info. This is a picture traditionally at the top of the page, but can be anywhere in your design. So if it's at the top of the page, it's 960 by 177. But say you wanted a, a completely different design of page, and you wanted a, uh, a totally different shape of uh, picture, uh, you could just load that and instead of using uh, change your HTML so you, it's not the banner pick anymore and put it somewhere else. So once you start working with this uh, jQuery, JavaScript and HTML, you can do all sorts of different things with the, uh, with the site. So let's go and have a look. If we go back here. Let's have a look at the events, top banner events. So you can look here, this is the ja JavaScript for the top banner events. So event one contains an array, top line, second line, linked to somewhere if needed. It's got three different things in it. So um, we can go and see how it looks on uh, in our jQuery. This is what we're looking at. This is what Govinda is doing. So you get event one, event two, and event three. Now, if we just remember, it said there are three bits of info: top line, bottom line, and the last one will be a link, so that if it's clicked on, you go to it. So we can we can work on on that. You can see it working on the main one. And um, I have to uh, let me just sort of save that. And we should get them all if we if we reload the Swift, we should get them appearing here. Here are the events, and you can see there is a one seems to be empty. Sorry, event one. There's nothing in line two, which would be the the, the URL. There's nothing in line in line one, uh, but at the top one it says Vision for My for HH Jive Attack So that would be the big title in big letters, and there's nothing. There's nothing there, and, and nothing there. It's actually vision for my Jaya Patakaswami, and all this goes there. We've probably gone one line. No, it doesn't go on one line. So in event two, there's some. There's again big letters. Oh, the top line will be Srimad Bhagavatam Lamb's Count with Ravinder Sarup. The second line in smaller lettering will be every Sunday at 3 p.m. And there's no link, a URL there. So what, you need, what needs to be done is just go through these, put them on the different formats, one below each other, and uh, get it get it working. So that's it. And uh, I have had trouble with refreshing this today. Sometimes it's refreshing and I'm not getting the video working. It seems to be doing it now. But sometimes it gets 
stuff when there's something wrong with it. And I have to keep hitting um, I have to keep hitting F5 to clear it, although you shouldn't have any cache here. It does seem to get a bit stuck in the cache sometimes, so I'm just having to uh, do a refresh and then keeping F5 and clearing the whole thing properly, and then eventually it sort of works. And that's what I've been getting. No picture. So I don't know why it's doing that. Which is interesting. I should be getting spinning round and it should be uh, giving me the video eventually but sometimes I've just been getting a flat video so there is there are a few bugs in this that aren't working let me just try it one more time yeah, that, that's working properly that's working properly that's working properly that's oops that's not working properly yeah okay when it does that, um, it's not giving you the, uh, it's not even giving us a slide in. So just watch out for that. There's one or two bugs. Okay. So that's, uh, that's about it. Now, fight ahead with that bit of information. Please get back to me with any more questions. That would be great. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.